times have changed. I remember when we provided a service. Public wanted booze, we gave them booze. <laughs> Public wanted a hooker, we gave them a hooker. It wasn't us against our customers. It was us against an unfair government. After all, people didn't like what we had to offer. We weren't in business too long. <laughs> I guess you could call us uh, the libertarians of the underworld. We believed in freedom of choice. We didn't force our product on you. We didn't even come to you. You came to us. We weren't criminals. We were entrepreneurs. We had honor. We had class. We knew the difference between respect and fear. Kids today, they didn't have to earn anything. They inherited it. So we got a bunch of goons and thugs raised on crappy B-movies thinking they're going to go out in a blaze of glory from the top of a water tower, shouting, Top of the world, Ma! Can we get this over with? Take her, for instance. To her, power means a stern fist and threats and crazy looks in your eyes. When I came up, you earned respect by being fair. You had to be cold, even vicious sometimes. But you was always fair. If one of our enforcers showed up at your doorstep, they were there at your invitation. If you showed disrespect, you were dealt with properly, sometimes violently, but always fairly. Nowadays, you rise to power by being more violent than the next guy. It's not about winning anymore. It's about making the other guy lose. It shouldn't be about fear maintained with violence. It should be about respect maintained through honor. Yeah, well, while you and the rest of the old fucks were worried about being honorable and fair, the Mexicans and the commies were moving in, taking our business, taking our territory. They beat us down because they were more vicious. That's how they turned you and this family into a f cliche. When you extended a hand, they chopped it off. When you proposed a talk, they bent you over and shoved a three-foot bowling trophy up your ass. That's how they came to power. Well, you know what? It's time to fight back. It's time to play by their rules now. It's time to become players again. So who's gonna do that, you? Or maybe you? You think you got what it takes to be the head of this family? It'll never happen. Of course, you already know that, don't you? Your mother was a capella, but your father was a limey. And you, <laughs> there's not a single capella that would let a woman be head of the family, so Let's see, who's it gonna be? Giorgio? Nah, ain't got the f balls. Vincetti. Hmm, no. He doesn't care about being boss. Don't tell me it's f***ing Anthony. What the fuck is wrong with Anthony? Cat! Oh, what's the f point? He's gonna be dead in a couple of minutes anyway. What difference does it make if he knows? Anthony is the head of this family. He'll turn it into a franchise. He gets a degree from a fancy college and he thinks he can run the business better than me? He has my vote. You think Anthony's gonna bring respect back to this family? He's got ideas. He's got new ways of doing business. Ways that'll drag this family out of the hole that's in and into the 21st century. Anthony couldn't pour piss out of a shoe if the instruction were printed on the heel. He's what our Yiddish friends call a f schmuck. How much longer do we have to listen to this?
The others will never stand for this. They'll never let it happen. What are you going to do? Take out all of them? My God. It's already started, hasn't it? In about three minutes, Giorgio will fall out of a window of a building downtown while doing one of his routine inspections. Pinchetti will be shot three times in the head after eating his favorite pasta primavera at his very own restaurant, Linus. Well, he'll be pulled over by the cops. Carry three kilos of cocaine. A cop will try to arrest him. And Linus will go for the gun in his glove box. The arresting officer will have no choice but to shoot him 12 times. You want me to continue? No, I get it. I've understood everything you've had to say, Don Capello. And I have respect for you. But there is one thing. I have more respect for her. And that's the name Capello. See, as you pointed out, my mother, your daughter, married a Lime, which means I'll never have the name Capello. The least I can do is preserve it. Put it in its rightful place in history. And if I have to do that, by making some changes, Starting over from scratch. Then so be it. One last request. Yeah, this must be done. Do it with my gun. It was the gun I retired my own father with. So, uh, which one of you is gonna do me? You? Or the c Faggot, see where your honor and respect got you? I wasn't done talking to him. I was done listening. Why did you do that? We're having a perfect little Pacino Brando moment. It was classy, that style. It was well played by both sides. It's done. I mean, the lighting was perfect. All that was missing was that low, moody violin music. And then you had to go fuck it up by shooting at the most unclimactic moment. You're about to take over one of the last great Mafia families. And you're worried about a f***ing violin? Yes, Cat. If you hadn't realized, I'm not exactly firing on all cylinders here. Can we do this now? I guess so. I mean, my monologue shot the shit. What else are we going to do? Unless you want to suck my... It was a fair question. Yeah, you were gonna pay her. Hey, uh, clean this up. Okay. Hey. Huh? With respect. Yeah, okay. I'll stick a flag in his ass and salute as he falls to the river. I like it. Do that. This really cool dance camp. It's four weeks in July, and it could be somewhere you could send me so the two of you could have some good quality time together. <laughs> she gets that from you, you know. So, could I go? We'll talk about it later. Let's think about it. I've been doing so well, I won the city competition last month, and I've been doing this long enough that you and Daddy can see that it's not just some phase I'm going through. I think I've been letting you watch too much TV. I should have learned better with your brother. Hello? Trevor? 
It's Frank. Something's going down. What do you mean? Giorgio, Vincetti, and Joey, they were all just popped. Don Capello. I've got some of the boys checking on it now. Trevor, I think someone's making a move. Gee, you think? Trevor, I think you need to get out of there. Disappear, you know? What? Why me? I'm just the family attorney. Besides, where the fuck am I gonna... Frank? Frank? Shit. Okay, girls, we're gonna do a little fire drill right now. We've got three minutes to go and get whatever's most important to you, and then we're gonna leave here for a while. What? What's wrong? Why do we have to have a fire drill in the middle of dinner? Let's just play this little game for Daniel, okay, sweetheart? Trevor, you're scaring me. I want my food to get cold. Listen, sweetie, how about we take you to Happy Burger and get you a kitty's meal? That'd be good? Actually, I'm kind of in the mood for breakfast. Wow, Daddy, we have a fire table all out, don't you? Go. Go upstairs. I don't go. think you're supposed to do that in a fire, Daddy. Come on, Tara, let's just go. Do you remember where you were going to Okay, okay. I need you to go in there and go hide in there and don't come out, okay? Until either me or your daddy or my house police something, okay? It's going to have is it? No, it's not, but your daddy and I are going to make sure everything's okay, all right? Go hide, go Frank tell you what's going on? happen tonight. Right now, you're thinking you're safe. And as long as you forget what happened tonight, you will be. I won't come after you. But one day, when you feel the need to come after me, and I know you will, they always do. I want you to remember this. Tonight, I give you the name Juliet. I do this so after you're all grown up and you find me one day, I'll know who you are. Mongo, come on, let's go. Just a minute. Ah, oh, Julia.
Hi, Tara. My name is Violet. You're a detective? Yes. How are you feeling? Tara, I know you've been through a lot tonight, but do you think there's anything you can tell me about what happened tonight? No. Why not? I don't want to. Tara, don't you want to help us catch the people that hurt your mom and dad? They didn't hurt them. They killed them. I'm not stupid, you know. I know how this works. How what works? Life. Wow. You seem a lot more mature for your age than I expected. Yeah. I get that a lot. What are you drawing? Me. Looks like a ballerina. Are you a ballerina? I was. I won the city competition last month. I bet that was hard. Tara, I know this is probably very hard for you, but I want you to know, I need you to understand that I'm just trying to help you. How? I want to help you by finding the people that did this to your parents. No, that's okay. I don't need your help. I can do it myself. Do what? Find the people who did this. Why would you want to do that, Tara? The same reason you want to find them. And what are you going to do when you find them, Tara? I know why you're doing that. Doing what, Tara? You're using my name every time you talk to me. You think it's going to make me feel more comfortable talking to you. Well, it's not going to work. It's not like I'm eight or something. How old are you? I'm ten. All right, Tara. If you want me to treat you like a grown-up, then I'll treat you like a grown-up. If you're going to treat me like a grown-up, why don't you try talking to me like one? I'm trying to. Then what did you say, grown-up? Do you call the drug dealers you arrest grown-ups? All right, fine. I'll treat you like an adult. Is that better? You may be very mature for your age, but you still need to understand that you're only 10 years old. You must understand that there isn't anything you can do to find the people that killed your parents. I know. Not right now, but I'll get older. Then I can do something. And then what? What are you going to do when you find them? I see. Well, you don't want to have to wait that long, do you? If you can help me now, tell me everything you can about tonight, then I might be able to find them sooner and bring them to justice my way. No, that's okay. Thank you, though. I can wait. Violet. Hi, Tara. My name is Captain Jensen. Detective Maltz here is going to take you to go get a soda. Her brother's here. Brother? Yeah, he's here to take her home. You mean to the blood-stained two-story home with crime scene investigators swarming all around it? That home? No. The brother's home. He's 21. He's got a place of his own. Look, he doesn't mind us asking Tara any questions. And he'd be more than glad to bring her back as many times as we need. But for now, he wants his sister to be with the family. Not in this cold, sterile police interrogation room. And I agree with him. But Captain, this girl could tell us what's going on out there. What happened tonight? We don't need a 10-year-old girl to tell us that someone in the Capello family clean house in order to take control. We just forget about tonight and all the people who got murdered? They weren't people, Violet. They were thugs, goons, and killers who got caught up in a power struggle in a crime family. It's Fed's turn. Leave it alone. And Tara's mom and dad, were they killers? The father was a Capello family attorney. And the mother, just because she was Capello blood, that makes her guilty? She's going home, Violet.
fingerprint results on the pistol. You're not gonna believe this. The mothers. No, the little girls. Where is she? Her brother came and picked her up. Picked her up? She killed a guy. Yeah, a guy who she just watched kill her mom and dad. You want a booker? Try and sell that to a jury. What the hell is this? The girl was doodling. The hell of a doodle. What, it's a ballerina. How oh, fucked up ballet movies have you been watching? Sweetheart? No. Look, I'm sorry I wasn't there last night. It's okay. I'm glad you weren't there. Why? Because then you'd be dead too. Well, you're with me now, Tara. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. I promise. It's not like you, Angelo. Making promises you can't keep. How about I promise you something else? How about I'll teach you things so that what happened to mom and dad can never happen to you. You'll never have to depend on me or anyone else for protection. Would you like that? How are you going to do that? I'm going to teach you to do what I do. Program computers? <laughs> no, not program computers. I used to work with Dad. Did you know that? You weren't allowed to talk about what Dad did, remember? Do you know what Dad did? For the government? Not exactly. Oh, so he worked for the other of the government. You could put it that way. So, you and Dad are the bad guys? Yeah. We were the bad guys. I want to be a bad guy, too. Good. Then I'll teach you to be a bad guy. Then one day, I'll kill the people who killed Mom and Dad. We'll do that together, sweetheart. Well, I'll be right back. I gotta go to the bathroom. Angel? Yeah, Tara. Thank you. Wrong, kiddo. Tara. Tara! Tara! Get back in the game!
I know it makes your clothes stink. <laughs> I know it makes your house stink. Hell, it will kill you. You can't deny. Smoking's cool. I have to agree. Smoking's cool. Oh, really? Yeah, and don't give me this bullshit about secondhand smoke. Who are these people here, Chase? You're sitting in the smoking section, lady. Hey. You're gonna get smoke. Hey, bright eyes. It's lunchtime. This was the only place available, okay? Aha! Uh -huh. uh, see? So you got another reason to smoke. It's estimated that 20% of Americans smoke, which means only 20% of Americans are asking for the smoking section, which means the smoking section will fill up slower than the rest of the sections. Ergo, we get seated at restaurants faster. Plus, we get hot chicks. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Logically speaking, your odds on getting laid would be better as a non-smoker as opposed to being a smoker. How do you figure? Okay, well, say you're at a bar and you're hitting on this girl. If she's a smoker, then obviously she doesn't care if you smoke or not. But if she's a non-smoker, then she's probably going to want a non-smoker as well. Therefore, as a non-smoker, you could get all the smokers and all the non-smokers, whereas being a smoker, you could get all the smokers and only some of the non-smokers. You would think that, but chicks dig bad boys. And what do bad boys do? They smoke. Exactly. So, people who don't smoke should just shut the fuck up and let us enjoy ourselves. It's still proven to be harmful to people. That's actually bullshit. Oh, what, the Lung Society, the cancer people, all these organizations are just lying? Actually, all of those were based on a study done by the WHO. That's World Health Organization. Do you know what that study found? I'm dying to hear. Excellent. I'll enlighten you. They found that 12 out of every 1 million people exposed to secondhand smoke get lung cancer. 12. Fucking 12 out of every 1 million people. But it still proves that it affects people. Do you know exactly how many non-smokers who are not exposed to secondhand smoke got lung cancer? How many? 10 out of every 1 million people. So, you're going to compare 12 out of every 1 million people versus 10 out of every 1 million people. It's still annoying to non-smokers. Fuck them, okay? This bitch sitting over here is wearing nasty-ass hey, perfume. Hey, hey. It's nasty. Hey. It smells like a swamp thing shed out of gardenia. It's causing me severe mental and emotional stress as we speak. But do you know what? I'm not going to ask for a ban against stinky-ass perfume. So, as much as I'm enjoying this delightful little piece of dialogue, are we going to take the next tip? Don Capella wants to know. Which hit? The Aussie or the Mexican? I thought we turned down the Aussie. What? I thought we said no to the albino. We just came from the albino. You did? I figured the powder white skin would have tipped you off. <laughs> the albino? I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about a guy from Albany. I, you sorry. can't be that stupid. Yes, I can. Why is that so hard to confuse? We always talk about people based on where they live. The Asian is from Asia, and the Aussie from Australia. The, the Pole, the Russian, the Mexican. Oh, come on. You bunch of low-life, uneducated folks. We call them Hispanics. Sorry, my apologies. You see, he was from Mexico. He was a Mexican national. Yeah, yeah, anyway, so are we taking this hit on the Mexican? When have I ever turned down a gig? You weren't too crazy about the Turk. Well, have you ever seen any movies? Anytime somebody goes up against a guy nicknamed the Turk, bad things happen. Those Turks are mean motherfuckers. I'm not exactly Mr. Nice Guy. You're no Turk. So, yes on the Mexican? Wait, what happened to the Thin Man? Cat canceled that hit, remember? You know, what is Cat up to? I haven't seen her around. She's been busy with things. With things? What the fuck is things? Things that people like Cat do and goons like us don't have to worry about. We're just the hired help. So why is Cat above you, Angie? I mean, you do all the planning. Cat and I have an understanding. I am the brains behind the operation. Don Capello is just way too fucking dumb to even think about running this organization, which is why he takes his advice from Cat. What people don't know is that I advise Cat. Ergo, I am in charge of the entire family. This way, the people who know I exist just think I'm a $2 enforcer. That way, if anybody moves in on the family, they'd be after Cat and Don Capello. Angelo's so far down the list, he'd have plenty of time to prepare. The idiots would probably even be stupid enough to ask him for help. It's a wonderful arrangement. Yeah, it's fucking peachy, but there's one problem. The Don and Cat are protected like the fucking Pope. You're sitting in a coffee shop right now. How is that safe? It's all part of the illusion. I get to dress the way I want. I get to sit here enjoying your pleasant dialogue. But if people actually knew who I was, I would have to be under lock and key. 
I'd be targeted by every hitman, police organization, CIA, FBI, fuck you up, cut you up, whatever. And I wouldn't be able to do anything. Hmm. So what happens if you die? What happens to the family then? Fuck, do I care? I'll be dead. <laughs> so, Mexican? Yes? Are we going to be out by three? Why? Do you have a date? No, I have that recital, remember? Shit. Is that this Sunday? Yes. That's this Sunday. All right, I'll tell you what. How about we move things around? We'll get the Mexican at noon. Will that give you enough time to get back to campus? I don't see why not. Okay. So, Sunday, noon, Mexican. Thanks, Angela. No problem, sis. Hello, Intel on this thing, and don't tell me it was for my boy Smokey. Look, let's just say that uh, it fell in my lap. All right? You ready to do this? Yeah, man. Cool. Boil's nice. On the windows? I like it. <laughs> so how's it hanging, man? Just a little, a little left and yourself? To the right, man. Oh, <laughs> always to the right. Alright, alright. You got the shit? Nice, nice. Hey, Smokey, go get the shit. What the fuck's up with Smokey, man? He seems all nervous and shit. No, and that's just Smokey being Smokey. Well, you starting to make me nervous. What the fuck is this? What the fuck? Can't you count? I said three bricks. Oh, sorry, man. Hold on. Something's off about you today, Smokey. Yeah? Something's off about me every day, Snake. You know that. Yeah, but today more than usual. You're not about to pull a double cross on me, are you? Snake, don't worry about it, man. I tried to pull that shit, put a bullet in his head myself. Stop fucking with him. You know he's my bitch. Yeah, what the fuck am I worried about, right? <laughs> you punk ass puta, go get my shit. Go on, get the shit. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck am I worried about, right? Where the hell did you find that guy, man? <laughs> I ain't got no fucking clue, man. Get the fuck down! Get down! Get down! Get down! Oh, fuck, man! It's cool, it's cool. No problems here. Hey, put it down! Put what down? Hey, put it down! What the fuck? need assistance at uh, 22 Azul Park Court Drive Road or something Are you gone? Yeah Is he gonna fuck us? Oh, Smokey? Yeah. yeah, he'll be there fucking hurts. You know that. Bad. I know. I've taken a couple myself. Just relax. They're on their way. Why would we leave homicide for vice anyway? Pay's better. So what? Fucking, I better get some more pay after doing this shit and that fucking... <laughs>
Don Capello wants me here. I don't care what Don Capello wants. I'm in charge, remember? Well, I want to be here. Why? Personal reasons. Ah, Kirby. Hey, how you doing? How is everything? Was the trip okay? What do you want? We have a problem. Good. I love problems. Helps me sharpen up my problem solving skills. Someone hit Riley. Oh, fuck. Who? A couple of cops. And it seems everything comes down to a good shoot. A good shoot? My partner is dead. How is that a good shoot? Sorry about your partner. Put that up. How you doing? I've been better. Have you thought about what we talked about? Do we have to talk about this now? Well, I thought under the circumstances, there wouldn't be a better time to talk about it than now. Lakes is dead. Which is why I thought you might want to change. Come back to homicide? We miss you over there. I'll put you back with Mike. You two got along, didn't you? Mike's an asshole. Which is why you two got along so well. I don't know. Vice is where I belong now. I think I'm going to stay. All right. But if you change your mind, let me know. Don't shoot you crazy bitch, it's me! Damn it, Smokey, what the fuck is wrong with you? Try some shit like that in the fucking parking lot of the police headquarters. You can't be that ignorant. I'm beginning to think I might be. What the fuck are you doing here? We gotta talk. Get in the front. Oh. I do have doors. Oh.
Hey. Biology? Is any of this shit actually interesting to you? Yes, it is. I thought I was paying for you to learn how to dance. You know, you don't just learn your major, right? You also have to learn other stuff. Seems pretty fucking worthless if you ask me. I mean, what's the point of that? To get a well-rounded education, you should try it. Am I sensing hostility? No. Maybe. It's not directed at you, I just have a professor who's being a- You want me to take him out? So what do I owe this visit from my annoying big brother? Brought you the following Mexican. Thanks. Okay, now I really know something's going on. God damn you big brother. Trust me. What is it? Does this have something to do with mom and dad? No, why would you say that? Well, because it's been eight years since somebody took him out, and you haven't gotten any closer to figuring out who did it. I stopped searching three years ago, remember? I found peace in what happened to them. I don't need to go and get myself killed over something I can't even change. You know, I, I hear what you're saying. Really, I do. But it's just the principle of the thing. You know what? When all this settles down, I'll start asking my own questions. Doing my own digging. When I find out who did this, you and I, together, we'll make them pay for what they did to mom and dad. When you find them, you can take care of it yourself. I don't need justice. I'm past that. All right. Well, then I'm past it too. Okay. Well, you have fun with all this. Bye. I'll uh, see you later, okay? See ya. So what's so fucking important? Someone tried to kill me tonight. And that's something new? <laughs> Shit, girl. People love me. People need me. No one wants to kill Smokey. Then why would someone try and kill you? I think someone found out I helped you. Impossible. Nobody knows about me and you. Well, someone knows something. Shit, Smokey. You didn't try and sell it, did you? Maybe. What the fuck, Smokey? You told me to sell it. Not the same fucking day. You wait a while. You didn't even cut it, did you? I figured it would be easy to sell it wholesale, you know? You have got to be the dumbest motherfucker I've ever worked with. Yeah, I know. So what are you going to do about this? Me? I'm not going to do shit. Right now, nobody knows about me and you. And it's going to stay that way. What? Oh, no. Fuck that shit. You better fucking help me or you'll never see anything from those kilos. I don't care. It's not worth my life. Your partner got killed over this shit and you're just gonna walk away? That's what you do, Smokey. <laughs> and me? What about me? You're just gonna throw me out there all by myself with some fucking drug dealers out there thinking that I jacked their shit? You did jack their shit. <sighs> with your help. They don't know. Oh, really? Well, maybe I should tell them that the next time they catch up to me, which they're going to do, you know? Why would you go and do something like that? Where the fuck are we? This is where you get out, Smokey. Williams here. 
Are you a cop? No. <laughs> I work with Smokey. Smokey's not here, and he hasn't been around for a couple of days, and no, I don't know where he is. Tell you what, can you do me for... May I leave a message for him with you? Yeah, but, you know, I'm not really sure he'll get it. Oh, he's gonna get it. Ah! I don't know where he is, I swear! I believe you. I, I tell you what, can you just tell him this for me? Hello, Detective. Do I know you? No, but you know of me. What the hell is that supposed to mean? You stole some drugs from some very powerful people. Are you nuts? Who do you think you are? That's the difference between you and I, Detective. I know who I am. Goth pal. The drugs you stole belong to the Capello crime family. Yeah, well, everything belongs to somebody. <laughs> everything does. Yeah, well, I suppose it does. But not all those someones would put two bullets in the back of your head for stealing $100 worth of crack cocaine. But you didn't steal $100 worth of crack rocks, did you? You stole three keys of cocaine. All right, who the fuck are you and what the fuck do you want? What I want is to help you. Who I am is no concern to you. I think it's a great concern to me knowing who I'm in business with. Well, I have no intention of entering a business relationship with you, Detective. Nor that kind of relationship. And what do you want? You can skip the video store tonight, Detective. That is far more interesting. It's a copy. I mailed the original to Captain Jensen. I put it in the mailbox down the street before I walked in. Now, with the postal system being as it is and having sent it media mail, He'll get to his desk in five days. Tuesday. Wednesday at the latest. Jensen isn't my captain. Why send it to him? That's because Jensen is homicide. Are you blackmailing me? No. If I were, I wouldn't have sent it until after you paid me. And what do you want? What I want is to help you. I want to give you the opportunity to do something good with your life before it all falls apart. Yeah. This is on me. We know you walked into the kitchen. You pulled the knife from the drawer. You walked into the living room and you stabbed your husband 26 times. And you're gonna sit there and tell me you didn't do it? Okay. Okay. Violet. All right, I wanna come back to homicide. Great. I'll get the paperwork started. We should have you back here in about two weeks. That should give you enough time to tie up any loose ends you have in vice. I don't have any loose ends. I want to come over now. Not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, and certainly not two weeks from now. Right fucking now. Violet, there's paperwork. Do you there... want me to come back to homicide? Yes. Then point me to a desk or point me to the door. All right. It'll be tricky, but I can make it work. You have to team with Mike, just until the transfer goes through. Is that good enough for you, Your Majesty? Is there anyone else but Mike? Just Mike. All right, fine. Welcome back, Detective. Mm -hmm. 
Now, uh, where were we? Like I said, he tripped. What are you doing? It's fucking June. You're wearing a trench coat. It's government issue. Oh, and these are the new approved smuggling routes. We've added to the number of shipments you can make by 10%. Any more than that? Nope. I got her. South end of the park. On a park bench. She's meeting a man in a beige trench coat. Ah, I see him. And we're changing the number of shipments of marijuana that you can make. Being that it's our major cash crop, we have to protect our investment. You can bring in the same amount you've been bringing in, but there's going to be an increase of 20% on the tariff. Fine. People pay more for our shipment than pay for your homegrown shit. There's something appealing about an import. Works for us. Fine. Oh, man. It is hot out here, huh? Mm. You call this security? Yeah. You want a sip? Ooh, is this something I shouldn't be involved in? I'm sorry. <laughs> Take them. Oh, there you go. Nice and nice. Oh, no, no. Head forward. There you go. Don't fuck with the Capellos. Everybody's ass. I can't believe how good she's getting. Actually, come to think about it, I'm surprised you asked. I didn't think you gave a shit about Tara's dancing. The Mexican. It went flawlessly. I don't think anybody's gonna notice the bodies for a couple days. And Smokey? Oh, boy, is slipperier than wet shit. But I'll get him. Don't worry about it. Well, Don Capello wants it handled by Wednesday. Since when is he giving orders? All right. We want it handled by Wednesday. Oh, I'm sorry. We? We? As in you? And Anthony? As in the guy who in one night, in one motherfucking night, I cleared the way for him to be empowered as Don? The guy, if I dropped him in a barrel of titties, he'd come out sucking his thumbs? That Anthony? You heard me. You smell that? Yeah, oh, that's funny. It smells like mutiny. Listen, Angela. You may think you run things from this little office and all, but out there, the captains, the lieutenants, they all listen to one man. And that man is it. So why don't you get that through your thick, tiny little skull of yours? When Anthony gets worried, I get worried. So when all these little no! things... You ungrateful wop bitch. It'll be a cold day in hell before you or that fat fuck give me orders. Unless you want to repeat of ten years ago. Because that was a goddamn cable up for me. Don't let it cross your little mind that I wouldn't mind doing that to Anthony. So you and that anal retentive jerk off better remember one thing. I give the orders around here. Not him. Not you. Me. Are we on the same page? Because I really love this little arrangement we have. And I'd hate to do a fucking rewrite. All right. Why don't you do me a favor, okay? Just get it done. Okay? Just get it done. <laughs> you! I'll handle it. Don't worry. All right. Mm -hmm. Turn this up here. Don't 
little mama. I said, don't bother. Who are you? Who I am is of no importance. Now what is important is that you've attracted the attention of some very powerful people. Some people who are less than impressed with your brother and his handling of the Capello crime family these few years. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do. But it's okay, I'd play dumb too. For now, you're gonna stand there. And you're gonna listen. That's all. Meanwhile, I'm gonna tell you how this is gonna play out. Now, if you decide to play along and admit that you know what I'm talking about, afterwards, I'm gonna allow you three questions. And then I'm gonna be leaving you with a decision to make. Is that understood? Good girl. I work for a man named Colin Donovan. Now he's been trying to convince Don Capello to agree to a proposal. However, the Don is failing to see Mr. Donovan's side of things. Now, we believe it's because the Don has the ear of your brother. And it is your brother who has been blocking Mr. Donovan's attempts at acquiring the Capello family into our organization, which is why he's enlisted me to enlist you. Now, if you agree to help Mr. Donovan acquire the Capello family, he offers you protection, a good salary, and possibly one day, offer up the people who are responsible for your parents' untimely demise. Now, if you agree to get on board with us, you'll be given the proper information and deemed appropriate. Is that all? You'll find, Miss Trudeau, that I'm not a man of many words. And when I do use them, they're all very important. And that was your first question. Fine. Second question. What is it you want me to do? That's a foolish question. I thought I already told you. You'll be given that information when it's deemed necessary and appropriate. Third and final question. Who the fuck are you and why should I pay you any mind at all? That was two questions. But since they both have the same answer, I'll answer them both. Now, if you question the validity of my words, you can take knowledge in the fact that I've often been referred to as the Shadow Dragon. Is that supposed to mean something to me? No, not to you. But ask your friends. They'll tell you I'm on the level. And that was five questions. I'm afraid I'm going to have to kill you now. I'm this big scary ass brother with this shadow dragon reputation. You think I can't have a sense of humor? Go, girl, laugh! <laughs> I didn't think it was that funny. <laughs> it's it's alright, just chill. Once you get to know me, you'll find that I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Except when I'm not. I'll be in touch. Stan? Good morning. Hi, um... Oh, um, I'm Angela. This is Chance. How do you do? And this is my little sister Tara. We're gonna be your interrogators this morning. Interrogators? Uh... You have something that belongs to us, and uh, yeah, we want it back. 
and it takes three of you to do it. See, Terry here is learning the ropes. And today's lesson is going to be how to interrogate somebody for information. Uh, guys, I'm really not the right person for the job. I got a low threshold for pain, and I'm not a very courageous person either. It's okay, Stan. This is only going to take a second. All right. What you need to do now, Tara, is you're going to ask him where the item is. Just the item, not the specific item? No, no, you want to be very general. This way it'll give him a chance to say, Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Or, what item? Okay, so, go ahead, give it a shot. Where is the item? It's in the trunk. It's just not that easy. Come on, Stan, work with me here. Okay, uh, what item? Now, what you do is you shoot him in a kneecap. Uh, actually, don't. Oh, God, dang it, why do you have you to shoot me there? No, I Son didn't of... miss. I shot him point blank in the knee. I'm giving you everything you want. Stan, Stan. I just. Stan. Do you have a wooden leg? Actually, it's an ally prosthetic. Mm. All right, shoot me the other leg. Well, no, 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 actually. Stan, do you have two prosthetic legs? Yeah. Damn, man, what happened? Diabetes. Oh, wow, you can lose your legs from that? I actually can. Yeah, I actually had a friend lost both of his legs to diabetes. He was jumping into a pool and he scraped his toe. He got infected and wouldn't heal properly, so they had to amputate. You might know him, his name's Tom Wolf. No. Why would he know him? Both amputees, I mean, I figured they might like, run in the same circles, so to speak. There's no reason to be rude. I wasn't being I was, was I being rude? It's inconsiderate of his feelings. Clumping everyone who has prosthetic legs together, just as if they know each other? You wouldn't ask Chow Young that if he knew Jet Li, would you? As a matter of fact, I would. If they're both movie stars, they both make the same kinds of movies, why would they not know each other? Guys, look, it's, it's in the trunk. Look, I'll show you myself. Okay, obviously now is not a good time for me to get an interrogation lesson. He already told us where it is. Yeah, let's just blow the lesson off today, Angie. <sighs> Fine. Thank you for cooperation, Stan. No problem. So, uh, you guys let me live, right? No. It's okay, I understand. You guys have been more than courteous, though. Just want to let you know that. We aim to please. <laughs> aim to please. That's a pun. That's... Yeah. <clears throat> well, sorry about the legs there. Thanks. You ready? No, but... Go ahead. Oh, I can't. What? Why not? Because he's been so polite. He didn't fight back. He didn't fuss, lie to us. He didn't even try to run away. He stole from us. No, technically, he bought something that was stolen from us. He didn't know it was stolen. You don't buy three kilos of cocaine for only $1,000 and not figure out something's up. If someone tried to sell you a widescreen TV for $200, you'd kind of have a clue something was wrong. Guys, I thought I was getting a really good deal. Really good deal. See? Even if he didn't realize he was buying stolen merchandise, he now knows what we look like and what our names are. Well, you're the dumbass that introduced us. I wouldn't hold that against him. Christ! You scared the crap out of me. I so did not see that coming. Well... Stand that is our good exit. Ew. It's a fucking mess. <laughs> it reminds me of my sex life. Oh, don't, don't worry about me. I've got it well in hand. Can't seem to find anything? Nada. These guys are good. No one's that good. Everyone makes mistakes, Detective. You got something? Nah. Just a college ID. Probably some chick the Vic banged a few months ago. What? You know her? I don't know. I think I do. Come on, let's go. Oh, it's just a college ID. What do you think, we got a band of college students running around doing mafia hits? This college student may be special. 
Look, it's nothing. I'm sorry I even found the damn thing. I'm not. You know, for the first time in your miserable little existence, you might have actually done something right. <sighs> you know, these little digs of yours, they do chip away at my self-esteem. Slowly and bit by bit, but they do. If I ever eat a gun, it's gonna be your fault. In that case, I accept full responsibility for your suicide. Lance, I need a warrant search on one Tara Trudeau. Nothing. All right, thanks. You know what? I've got a great idea. This might help out. How about we try and solve the crime? Where's the closest library? Oh, wait. I get it. The college student didn't do it, so it must be the librarian. But my money's still on the babysitter. Where? <sighs> Two blocks down, make a left, then a right. No, wait, that's a massage parlor. No, oh, no, it is the library. Yes, it is. All right but you're paying for gas. So what modern myth are we gonna debunk today? Secondhand smoking? <laughs> the Ouija board? I know, recycling. Mmm, what a crock of shit. I saw this program the other night about recycling and how it's actually worse for the environment than if you just dump the crap in a landfill. Speaking of landfills, you know that you can actually put a thousand years worth of waste into about 30 square miles of land? I have a myth that I'd like you to debunk if you could. But first I need you to tell me what it is. So why don't you like me? Because you're an ass? Yeah, but I'm a spunky ass. It's my charming wit and uncanny banter that brings life to the most dreariest of social occasions. I think that's the problem. Your witty banner usually rears its ugly head at funerals, homicide scenes, and sermons. Yeah, but that's when you need my uncanny banter the most. Those things are always so serious. You know, I mean, when else am I what supposed to... The Shadow Dragon. <laughs> Where did you hear about the Shadow Dragon? From a guy saying he was the Shadow Dragon. So you know who the Shadow Dragon is then? I know who he's supposed to be. But in reality, he's a ghost. He doesn't exist. If someone introduced themselves to you as the Shadow Dragon, they're just fucking with Why? Who's the Shadow Dragon? Well, there are a lot of stories about him. But the short of it is, he was an assassin. Trained in Japan by Yakuza Hitman. The best Yakuza Hitman, to be exact. Some say he's the illegitimate son of Emperor Hirohito. Emperor Hirohito of World War II? That Hirohito? Damn. Sounds kind of cool. So this guy's a badass. <laughs> Some say he and his fellow students are the last of the true samurai. Warriors who still believe in dignity and honor and all that kind of stuff. What do you mean, fellow students? Well, the master was given the task of training five people, all from five different crime organizations. The Yakuza, the Mafia, the drug cartels. And the Shadow Dragon was supposedly the representative of this underworld crime boss, not affiliated with any known historical organization, just some new rich and powerful businessman. Five people, five criminal organizations. Who are the other four? No one knows for sure, but they were all given the names of the dragon. Jade Dragon, the Golden Dragon, Spirit Dragon, Fire Dragon. Oh, what about Baby and Scary Dragon? <laughs> oh, and Sporty. Can't forget Sporty. You asked me about this. Are you going to listen or are you going to crack what? The dragon. Hirito's illegitimate son. Uh, Hirohito. Illegitimate son trained these five dragons. In the last hours of their training, four of them decided to end their tutelage. They killed their master? Violently and brutally. Why? I don't know. It's just part of the story. Let me guess. The shadow dragon is the one who did not kill the master. If you've heard this, why are you asking me about it? I didn't ask, she did. Go ahead, why don't you tell me? Well, actually, now that I think about it, it's all coming back to me. Some people say that the Shadow Dragon found the Master while he was still alive. During the time, the Master imparted the last of the knowledge to the Shadow Dragon, the knowledge that he was going to give to the, all five students. But after the betrayal, only the Shadow Dragon received the knowledge. What was the knowledge? No one knows. But when the other four found out that the Shadow Dragon had this, they swore that they would get it for them with his last breath. The Shadow Dragon, on the other hand, swore to hunt down the other four and find justice for his fallen master. Supposedly, it is the last bit of knowledge that allowed the Shadow Dragon to bring all of the master's teachings into focus, making him a better fighter than all of the other four combined. It's cool. 
Sounds like some intense anime shit. It's not anime, but it might as well be. So, go on. That's it. He's just a badass hitman. An independent contractor who's under the ultimate control of this rich and powerful businessman who sent him to Japan. In his spare time, he hunts down the other four dragons. But what only a few people know is that the Shadow Dragon actually came across the Golden Dragon during a hit. After clearing out a room full of all these Bosusoku, he fought the Golden Dragon and broke her neck with one hand. But you said this guy's a man, right? Without a doubt. No one has ever seen him, no one knows his name, no one knows anything about him. Even snitches and the scumbags return. No one can give any good testimony, eyewitness, or even the thinnest piece of evidence as to what this guy looks like, let alone jobs he might be responsible for. And you think this guy's gonna come out of the shadows and knock on your door? More than likely, it's just some guy who wants to get you to do something, and he's using the shadow dragon name as a badge of some sort. Next time I saw the guy, I'd arrest him. I'd kill him. Yeah, but that kind of sucked for you if he really was a shadow dragon. Shadow dragon does not exist. Trust me. I have to change my locks. Put these on. Aren't you gonna buy me dinner first? Hardy fucking har. Put them on. Why would I do that? I put these on, you tell me to get on my knees, and then you put a couple bullets in my head. I'm homicide. So I put these on, you tell me to get on my knees, and then you put a couple bullets in my head. Put them on, or I will put two in your head. So what do I owe this visit from the local law enforcement detective? Well, at first, I was playing a hunch. Found your college idea at a crime scene. I figured it was a long shot, but I had knowledge that your family was related to the Capello family. So I thought, what the hell? I'll give it a shot. I snooped and didn't find a damn thing until I found this. He's a great graphic designer. You should use him. He's been helping me with these television production classes that I have. I see. So, what? Are you two working together? Hardly. He shows up in my apartment, much like yourself, and gives me orders to sit tight and just wait for more orders. Really? Really. I believe you. Hey, let's see you two have met. Saves me a phone call. All right, enough is enough, Shadow. They call me Ruby. Look, Ruby, I've heard you're supposed to be some big badass hitman. I've heard the myth, Yakuza, Hirohito. I'm so impressed, my uterus is bleeding. Your brother killed your parents. What? You, tiny dancer. Your brother killed your parents. Oh, please. How many times do we have to go over this? You expect me to believe that Angelo, my brother, has been looking me straight in the eyes for the last eight years, knowing deep down inside his heart that he's the one that killed our parents? You got it right. Her brother killed her parents. I mean, that wasn't English, was it not? Why should she believe you? You waltz into her life, into our lives, and you expect us to believe everything you say? I'm with her on this one. We're here minding our own business, running our normal daily lives, and blammo, here you are. Blammo. And not only do you expect us to act without questioning, you give us a sparse amount of information you can, and then off you go. Well, fuck you. No, you don't give us any information. You expect us to go out there and follow you around blindly like sheep going to the slaughter. We are intelligent human beings here. You see, this shit right here. This is why I hate working with women. What? what? Did he just say what I think he said? Yeah, I think he did. You know, I've been a police detective for the past 10 years, and a pretty damn good one at that. I've been primary on more solved cases than half the men I work with. 
and I've been in this game for less than three years, and I already have a higher tally than my partner who's been in it for five. And you know what? He's a man. Are you done? I'm telling you, you killed your parents. If you don't believe me, just ask him yourself. Go ahead. What, now? It's no better time than the present. I'm telling you, you killed your parents. Just ask him for yourself. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to tell you the truth. You're serious. I think he's serious. If I find out you lie... I don't lie. Go ahead, I'll lock up. You think I'm gonna steal your shit. Besides, she's a cop. She keep me honest. You think she would have reacted differently if she knew you were a crooked cop? All right. So what do I have to do with all this? I'm gonna help Tara. Help her how? She's gonna go to her older brother, who's the top enforcer for the Capello crime family. And she's gonna ask him, did he kill their parents? What do you think's gonna happen? Uh, yeah. You might wanna go keep an eye on her. Oh, right. Hey, I gotta go. Not the short bus. What's up? I need to ask you something. This is gonna sound a bit off the wall, so I'm only gonna ask you this once. What is it? Look, this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but somebody came by the other day with some information. Speak, Tara, speak. Come on, woof woof. Today, I got things I gotta Did do. Did you kill mom and dad? So, I mean, I guess bottom line, I think. Yeah, I did kill mom and dad. No, I think about it. That's not funny at all, is it? What? Yeah, I killed mom and dad, and now you know you're probably going to kill me too, aren't you? I hadn't even thought about it. How could you think you two shits about shooting me? It's not that. I can't believe you missed. Thank <laughs> you. 
up, Tara. Chance? The cops? Who else did you call? FEMA? Oh, big surprise, they're late. You know I won this, Tara. <laughs> oh, it looks good to kill. <laughs> what? What are you gonna do? Kill me? That thought crossed my mind. Get out of here. Call me. Get a breakfast. Chance. Chance. I can't believe he did it. I can't believe he actually did it. You confronted him about your parents. What did you expect? I didn't want to kill him. I just wanted him to admit it. See why? He's not gonna see it that way, sweetheart. He knows that you know. He's never gonna be able to completely trust you again. Why would he want to kill me? He's my big brother. And they were your parents. When are you gonna get that through your head? You really need to go to the hospital. This, this could get infected. That won't be necessary. What? You a fucking medic too? In a manner of speaking, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's a through and through. I'm gonna be okay. You make me laugh. Are you serious? Do I look like I'm not a serious person to you? You're supposed to be the best hitman out there, and this is how you mend a wound? The best? <laughs> Damn, I'm really moving up in the world. For being the best hitman? I haven't seen a whole lot out of you, but a whole lot of shit talk. What is that for? You don't have to kill a lot of people to be the best. Hell, some of the best hitmen have never even pulled the trigger themselves. They manipulate others into pulling the trigger for them. Oh shit, this is gonna burn like hell, isn't it? Just, just relax, sweetie. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? <sighs> Peachy. So what now? I bet Angelo is thinking the same thing right now. Yeah, I'm sure he is. But that still doesn't give me the answer I'm looking for. What do we do? Exactly what I tell you to do. All right, it's not like I have a choice, but fine. What are we supposed to do? You? Go home. I'll be in touch. Are you going to kill her? What do you care? I know who and what she is. I have no illusions about that. But when I look at her, I don't see some mafia enforcer. I see a little girl doodling in a coloring book. She's had some bad shit happen. That's what's gotten her where she is. I don't see her as a bad person. Just a victim of bad circumstances. Feels nice, doesn't it? What? Caring for someone. I'm gonna go home. Rest assured I have no intentions of harming her. What's become of the family cat?
What are you talking about? I'm thinking about Don Capello a lot lately. Anthony? No. The real Don. The one we killed. Oh. Do you remember what he said? About the family losing its honor? Losing its place in the world? I remember him saying something very like that. Right before I shot the fucker. You know, I'm still mad at you for that. He called me a cunt. You are a cunt. Did you shoot me? It's different when you say it. Why? Because you're a prick. I'm thinking about Vegas. What? You know, Vegas? In Nevada? Yes, I know Vegas. In Nevada. I think Vegas was an omen. A sign of what was to come for the family. Uh-huh. Hear me out on this. Do you remember when we used to own Vegas? I mean, not us, but the families. Vegas had style. Had a class. We kept the bums out and the high rollers in. But now, it's owned by fucking corporate fucks. We're just trying to turn the place into a goddamn theme park. You think Sinatra would play Vegas now? Fuck no! Vegas is all about keeping the kids as happy as the fucking parents. They'll take anybody's money. Just like the family. We'll take anybody's money now. There was a time we cared about the hardworking Joe. About him making a living. Now, not only do we take his money, break up his marriage, check his email, steal his credit card numbers for what, a thousand dollars? Maybe two? And then what do we do with it? We'll put a credit line so we can buy stuff on the internet. Yeah. What the fuck have we become? It became Vegas. Family went fucking corporate. <laughs> that was some deep shit, huh? You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have ourselves a good old-fashioned showdown. What? Every good action movie has that at the end. Why can't we just send some of our boys to take it out? Have you never watched an action film? If we do that, they're all gonna end up dead. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give her a call, and I'm gonna set up a spot for us to be. Then her and I will have our little one-on-one. -on -one. I bet. She'll be stupid enough to even show up. I don't think that's such a good idea. Why not? She can't beat me. I taught her everything she knows, which means she doesn't know what I didn't teach her. Alright. If you're gonna do this, I'm gonna be there to watch it back. Baby, I can handle this. You don't need to be there to watch my back. Maybe so. But nevertheless, I'm still gonna be there. I don't think that's a good idea. It's false to me that you and Don Capello are as protected as possible, no matter what. I agree. But if she's as beatable as you say she is, then I don't have anything to worry about, do I? Look at you go. I like that. Using my own confidence against me. Hello. Hello, little sister. Hello, big brother. So, I was thinking, how about instead of dragging this all out, we just get together and clear the air between us? How's that sound? You tell me the time and the place and I'll be there. Tonight? The place where you did your first hit? You have yourself a deal. I'll see you then. It's on. Detective, it's time. It's time. You sure about this? What choice have I got? All right, I'll call the boys. No, I'll do it. All right, you do it. But swing by my place, though. I gotta pick up a few things. No. What, you want me to go in there with just a single nine and a couple clips? You're not going. The hell I'm not. I need you to do something else. Something more important to me than you getting yourself killed. Well, this must be important. 
Huh? What do you need? Didn't you once say you never make this personal? This isn't personal. This is business. Ready. This is the place. Alright, let's go. Aren't you coming? If you two fuck this up, there's no reason for me to be there. How are you gonna know if we do our job? Captain, what's up? What do you want, Mike? Nothing. I just had some downtime. Thought I'd come over and shoot the shit a little bit. We never talk anymore. We never talk, Mike. Yeah. Why is that? Because I don't like you. How can you say that? Ooh, what's this? Mike. Ooh, is this a new Bubblicious Babes DVD? Mike, give it back. I really never thought you as the type of person who would go for this kind of thing. Mike, give me the damn disc. Yeah, they're really skimping on the cover art nowadays, aren't they? Mike, unless you want to get bumped down to traffic. Oh, traffic's not that bad. In fact, there's this really cute rookie down there. What's her name? Sandra, Stacy, Sarah. Mike, I think her name's Sarah. Give me the disc. Not until you tell me what's on it. I don't know. Just give it to me and I can find out. Ooh, let's watch it together. Michael! Did you just call me Michael? Yes, I did. I can't believe you went there. I thought we had an understanding. Michael, give me the fucking disc. Thank you. What? Get out of here. Go bust some jaywalkers or something. God damn it, Michael! like Tara and four others. Is he one of them? No. I don't think so. Man, you gave me a hard on for nothing. Well, if he is, we'd never know it. They don't call him the Shadow Dragon for nothing. Ah, there it is. Back.
This is why you don't send the mooks. We did not spend more than $500 on that entire group. This has nothing to do with you to go home. What? This is between Tara and I. Get the fuck out of here. But if she beats you... She is not gonna beat me. It is physically impossible for that little girl to beat me. All right. If you're sure. Go! And, and a frappuccino in the morning would be really nice. Something here. Yeah, no, that I mean us. What about us? I oh, think we'll be just fine so long as we get the fuck out of here. I'm right behind you, man.
You ready? Yeah. Thank you, Detective. I couldn't have done this without your help. Thank me when we're done. This is where we part ways, Detective. What are you talking about? It's about me from here on out. All right, fine. It's your show. Just tell the dragon it wasn't me who backed out, all right? Will do. I'm really going now. If you get your ass kicked, I'm not gonna magically appear and save your life. I'm going straight to my car and driving home. Stop talking and just do it. Come on, Tara. You know how important the lighting is for the mood of the final confrontation? I raised you better than this. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I can't believe you actually came. What'd you expect me to do? Well, honestly, run. I mean, you can't win. I mean, what'd you do, go have a training montage? I mean, the more you train, the more I train. The better you get, the better I get. You can't win. You see, this is your training line. No, 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 no. This is my training line. Wow! See that? You know what that says? No victory for you. Maybe. But I still had to try, right? Did you expect me to just run off and hide? What kind of life is that? It would be a life, Tara. I mean, I'm too busy here running a crime family to have to come chasing after your sorry little ass. Can we get this over with? I guess so. That really isn't the time for my uh, little monologue, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a cheap shot. Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. We'll do this for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Booyah! Oh, I'm sorry. A little, little, little bow or something this time. Come here. Come here. Oh! Oh, maybe I deserve that just a little bit. get to give my monologue. You know, Tara, I would love to say I'm sorry, but I'm not. You see, I'm kind of glad it's all over. Now I don't have to wonder about when you're going to come out of the shadows. Strike, shoot me in the head. But you know what was worse? It was when I was two steps ahead of you. When I didn't know when or if you were going to figure it out. That. That was the tough part. 
But now, there you are, defeated. The good guy bleeding. Me, the bad guy, about to put a cap in your ass. You are defeated. You've lost. Terribly, I might add. Now, <laughs> bad guys won. But, don't disappoint me. Come on, give me that one-liner, huh? Come on, a little sarcastic little line that's gonna make the whole audience clap the moment you kill me, huh? Come on, give me one, come on, come on! I'm sorry to disappoint you, big brother. This wasn't about you, or me. This was about them. Them? Fucking them? Who the fuck is them? Me. And me. Are we good? We're good. Tara. What? I'll be in touch. I know. Hello, Shadow. Hello, Spirit. That's two to go. Like your boy did it. Yeah. How does that make you feel? I don't feel anything. So what are you gonna do now? I don't know. You know the family's gonna be after you. I know. Aren't you worried? About what? About the shadow dragon. You're the only cop who's ever seen his face. Aren't you worried he's gonna try to protect his identity? He has nothing to fear from me. I've got the DVD back. So he doesn't have to worry about me trading his sorry ass for mine. You sure about that? See you around? Probably not. So what do you think? I think you're still a prick. Well, yeah, but I saved your life, so that's got to count for something. You didn't save my life, Mike. But you did keep my ass out of jail. That does count for something. You got a light? Yeah. No. 
He's got one. Ask him if we can borrow it. Shadow Dragon does not exist. Aren't you worried? About what? About the Shadow Dragon. Some of the best hitmen have never even pulled the trigger themselves. So you know who the Shadow Dragon is then? I know who he's supposed to be. But in reality, he's a ghost. He doesn't exist. You got something? Just a college ID. How did forensics miss this? I want to give you the opportunity to do something good with your life. Pull it off as a Alright. So what do I have to do with all this? I'm gonna help Tara. No one can give any good testimony, eyewitness, or even the thinnest piece of evidence as to what this guy looks like, let alone jobs he might be responsible for. You're the only cop who's ever seen his face. Aren't you worried he's gonna try to protect his identity? So let's get the intel on this thing. And don't tell me it was my boy smoking. Let's just say that, uh, fell in my lap. And me? What about me? You're just gonna throw me out there all by myself with some fucking drug dealers out there thinking that I jacked their shit? Some of the best hitmen have never even pulled the trigger themselves. They manipulate others into pulling the trigger for them. This is for Tasha, bitch!